Each journey begins with a single step, but it also ends with a single step. So let's finish this thing. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. We are finally finishing the hand plane. <laughs> now, if this is your first video, you may want to go back and watch this series. I will leave a link to the whole series up in the cards. Um, or if you just want to see a quick overview of how to build this in like 10 minutes or so, I do have a video that compresses all this information of like well over an hour's worth of video footage down into a 10 minute chunk of how to. Uh, but for those of you who really want to see the details on how to make a hand plane the traditional may way, in other words, not laminating it, um, I'm putting this whole series together and showing how to cut this out and how to shape everything. In the last video, we went over putting the wedge together, cutting it, fitting it into shape, and getting it in there. And in this video, we're going to do basically everything else. We're going to shape the wedge, we're going to put in the button, we're going to shape the ends, and we're going to finish it, we're going to flatten it, we're going to test it, and we're going to have a lot of fun. So let's quit talking and jump into this. Okay, so I'm going to start with a wedge, and all I want to do is lop off these corners at 45 degrees. Uh, so I can use my square and draw a mark on there at 45 degrees. And I'll just cut that off with a saw. And basically all that does is it protects these corners so that if I hit them with a mallet, they don't splinter off, but there's still a large impact area up top. So let's put this in the vise, slice them off clean it up, and then move on to the body of the plane. Now the next thing I want to do is put a striking button up in here, and because the wedge is Epe, I thought it would be kind of a cool idea to make the, uh, the striking button out of Epe as well. So I don't want it to be too big, I want it to be about an inch by about an inch, nothing major, and I don't really care what its size actually ends up being, because whatever it ends up being, I'll just make the hole to fit it. So I'm going to put it somewhere around there, and I'll make a mark here, and I'll make a mark here, and then I'm going to cut that out with a saw, and that will basically be putting a butterfly in here, but it'll be a square butterfly. Next, I'll put on some double-sided tape, and this will allow me to position this button evenly in there, right about there. That's about where I'm looking for. Not looking for anything dead on accurate. If it looks straight, it is straight, I guess. <laughs> and then we'll mark it out. The double sided tape just makes it easier to hold it in place so it's not sliding around too much. Get a really nice, clean, accurate cut. Then we can pull this off, clean up the tape and uh, chop out that hole that we just made. Now normally I would come in here with an auger bit and I would bore down to the depth and remove most of the waste, but in this case I'm not going to mess with that. I'm just going to grab a chisel and a mallet and go to town. Probably getting tired of hearing me say this, but I'm going to stay away from the line and chop it out. Put in stop cuts, remove the waste in between, slice out, repeat. Now as I get close to depth, I'm going to check the depth of the button with a caliper and then I'm going to set this in here. I don't have a router plane to get down in that small of, a, of an area, so I can just check the depth with this and know I'm pretty close and then I can just come in and pair out down to that depth. Bevel down on the chisel, clean out the bottom, make it nice and pretty like. Man, this hard maple is tough stuff. You've got to have a really sharp chisel to get it. So once I have that down to depth, I'm fairly happy with it. Then I can come back in with a chisel and get closer to that line. Not getting right into it, but staying away from it. Keep the chisel perfectly vertical, chop straight down. And go all the way around. And then once I've gotten really close to the line, I can't get any closer. Then I'll go right into the line and chop all the way down. Now that we've cleaned it out, I can add a little bit of glue. That was more than a little bit. <laughs> Spread it around, especially when I have it on the sides. With high glue, there's a bit of a um, slippiness, slipperiness, so it actually slides in a little easier. Works those gaps nicely. Make sure that I have it on all surfaces. And then, the fun part of set this in here, and if it's a good tight joint, you should have to pound it in to get it all the way down. 
used a little more high glue than I need to do, but that's okay. High glue is finished transparent, so it will not uh, show as much. Now I want to actually start shaping the body. Now I'm not, I'm not big into these artistic wavy shapes or any of the more traditional shapes. Um, I kind of like the horn style from some of the German planes. It's, it's a very simple style. You have a chamfer running down the end, a rounded over end so your hand fits into it, and something for you to push against. Now I don't want to put this horn in here, so instead of that, I'm actually just going to round over the end here so that I can grip it. I'm going to round the back over here so that my palm is comfortable on this. I'm going to be taking off this corner. Basically, the end of this will just be rounded over so that it fits my palm and has a nice feel there. And then up here for the end, I want to be able to hold it like this. I'm going to round this corner around so my fingers can wrap around there. I'm going to have a niche out here where my thumb fits. My thumb pad will fit right on top of the button. And then I'm going to gouge out a chunk here for the rest of my hand to fit in so it will actually wrap around this. So it's a fairly simple design. So what I'm looking for is I'm feeling how this is ending. I want to round this out. It's got to come out the corners a good bit. So I'm just gouging out material until I think it's getting close. You can see I put a line in the end. It's kind of my guess of where I'd want to be. Just playing with it, feeling it occasionally, seeing how it feels. Then coming back and cleaning up some more. I love this texture in here. Sometimes it's easier to go across the end grain than it is to come out the end grain. So occasionally I'll stop and I'll feel it and see where I want to go. On this side, I don't want it to come up as far, but this side has my thumb. So this side I want it to come up the corner a good bit more so my thumb has more space to fit into. So now that I've got it fairly close with the gouges, I'm going to come through with a rasp and file and just slowly take this down finer and finer until I get close to the shape that feels good. And at this point with the rasp, I'm only feeling it quite often and seeing, you know, does that feel good? I like that. Is that the way I want it to go? Where do I need to take off more material? Just keep working at it until it feels right. Then after the heavy rasp, come in with a finer file, or in this case a very, very coarse file, and take it down even closer. And then with every file I go finer, I'm just looking at the marks left from the last file and smoothing them out, getting rid of any marks left over. So it's nice and clean transitions, nice smooth feeling. The file is great for that because it rides over the low spots and just hits the high spots. Unlike sandpaper on your hand, it'll ride over everything and grind out the low spots as well as the high spots. There's a file, it's kind of like a joiner, cleaning the whole thing up. You also notice I'm holding it with two hands. A file and a rasp are two-handed tools. And they only cut in one direction. So yes, you can go back and forth on it, um, but that's a little wild. Sometimes when you want to take off a lot of material quickly, I do that, but most of the time, just in one direction. Looking for all of those little marks left over from the last file, cleaning them out, smoothing them out. Okay, so now that I've cleaned up the back of this and it's feeling about right, now I want to work on the front up here. And basically what I want to do is have a large gouge out this side for my hand to fit into, then a smaller gouge for my thumb, and then round over this corner. I want to be a, a decent little grip right here. And then the, the button will then sit right on my thumb. So uh, let's actually trace this out, how my hand fits. So something there to there, around this corner like that. And then I want you to come in something more like that. So let's uh, get to the gouge again and basically do the exact same thing, but on this end. Then just as before, <laughs> come in and clean it up with a file, rasp, get it close, and get a little closer with a finer file, finer file, until it feels really good and everything is the way I want it. And then, in this little dip, I actually want to concave a little bit where my thumb connects. So I'm going to use a riffler here and use that with a series of smaller ones to clean out this concave section here. So that there's a smoother spot where my thumb connects. 
The last bit of shaping I want to do is here. This just is a little bit tight, so it's hard to reach in there to grab curls out. Um, even though it is a low angle and this bed comes farther back, I want to make this opening a little bit wider for the fingers. So traditionally, there's a thing that goes in here called an eye. And it's just a simple work. And if you really want to get into this, there are very specific guidelines for the eye. And a lot of people really get bent out of shape over having the right shape of an eye. Um, but for me, I just like to kind of gouge it out just a little ways. Try and make it match. Try not to slide past and gouge out the other side. And just make it a little bit wider here at the mouth, making it a little easier to get your fingers in there. Just having a bit like that makes it easier to get your finger down in that gap closer to where the curls will be for cleaning out any jams. So I want to make these two match. Basically have the start and stop points and the depth of cut about the same on the two. I'm just going to rough out the shape and then spend some time detailing them in cutting them in to about the same depth. Good sharp chisel does amazing things, even in hard maple like this. Then the last bit of shaping I'm gonna do is just put a chamfer down the edge. And I'm gonna do that with a plane, hold it about 45 degrees, and then slide all the way down. That chamfer just makes it look a little bit more finished. Gives it a nice clean line. Just about there, make the, the chamfer match on both sides. And now it's time for all of the cleaning work. So now it's shaped, it is what we want, it is looking right, uh, but we need to go through and do a lot of detail work. I'm gonna go through and smooth down the sides. I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna use some sandpaper and I'm gonna clean up all the marks. I'm gonna start with like 150 and I'm probably gonna go up to around a 400 grit sandpaper get rid of any nicks and scratches, make everything feel really nice and smooth, clean the whole thing down and get it ready. Um, on the sides, I'm just gonna run a plane all the way down and get those nice and flat. And then uh, we're gonna be ready for adding some finish. For cleaning up around the button, I'm just gonna use this card scraper, allows me to get in close and clean up, up to an edge or right along the edge. It's a nice clean surface. Then on the sides, I'm going to come in with a smoothing plane and clean off any marks that were made. Give it a nice finished smooth surface. I'm going to leave the bottom alone. I'm going to flatten this and smooth it out later, but I'm going to do that after the finish is on, and that way I know everything is in tension, everything is the way it's going to be. So now the body is ready, it's all smoothed out, it's sanded, it feels really, really nice. A good grip on there. We're gonna go ahead and start finishing it. Now here's where a bunch of people start moaning and complaining. Yes, I'm going to finish these with boiled linseed oil and paste wax. And the reason I do that is because I love the way it feels. It gives a hand tool this fantastic um, happiness that you just can't get from most other finishes. Plus it brings out the color and the contrast between the Ipe here and the uh, maple. It's just phenomenal. Um, I love the way that boiled linseed oil looks and paste wax on the finish feels fantastic. Not to mention all you have to do to freshen it up is add a little bit more paste wax in the future and you're ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply this, let it soak in. I'm probably gonna do two or three coats of boiled linseed oil, letting it soak in and uh, fill everything out. I'm gonna do it every 15 minutes or so, I'm not waiting for it to cure or set. I just want to let it all fill all the pores. And then once it has set, I'm gonna come back with some paste wax and uh, take care of the rest. So I'll uh, cover this up and let you see the rest. So at this point we have three coats of boiled linseed oil on here and it's feeling really nice. Now I wanna come in here and add some paste wax. And I'm just gonna rub it into the surface, let it work down in every nook and cranny. I'm not gonna put it inside the mouth at all, um, except for like here on the eyes, I'll cover in there. Uh, we just don't wanna get that on a place where the wedge will be going in because that will be causing issues. But we're just gonna rub it into the surface, let it sit for 15, 20 minutes or so until it starts to harden and then come and buff it off. So I'll bring you back when we get to that spot. And last we can come in here, just gonna use an old sock and buff out the paste wax. It's kind of come to the point where it's hardened a good bit, um, but this will just make it a little bit more shiny. Now there's only one other thing we gotta do. I'm gonna let it cure for a couple hours 
and then I'm going to come back and we're going to flatten the sole and it will basically be done. We can set, take it for a test ride. So I'm going to put this all together and I'm going to put the iron in place but then I'll back the iron up a little bit so that it's away. Uh, basically I just want to have the whole plane in tension so that when I do the flattening um, the pressure is where it will be for its normal use. Now if you don't already have a joiner, you could lay out some sandpaper on a smooth piece of glass and to go to town on it, but I want to use this because I have it. It's usually what I suggest people use. Just want to clean it off from end to end and then I'm going to start here in the middle. I'm going to take a couple passes in the middle. Just get rid of any high spot that might already be in the middle. I'm going to keep going until I don't take a shaving anymore. You can see how there it's just it's sliding here in the middle and not taking anything. That lets me know for sure that this is bellied out flat. Now I want to come back through and take one shaving from end to end on both sides. Now that I know it is flat end to end, I want to know if there's any twist in it. And that's where winding sticks come in. I can set the sticks on here and I can get down and I can eyeball it and see if I have any twist. And it looks like I have a little bit of twist I need to get rid of. Just a hair. That corner over there is a little high. So let's see where it's high. If it's an even twist from end to end, or if it's just that one spot. Looks like it's just high in this corner. So if I just do a pass like that, that should just about do it. One of the nice things about having this long of a winding stick is you know it shows you every little detail. Yep, that's perfect right there. Nice and flat end to end, and we are good to go. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my smoother, and I'm going to take off a thousandth of an inch or so, maybe a little less, and give it a really nice clean surface. Gonna add my paste wax to smooth it out, give it a little bit of friction. Going to put a uh, layer of a hard paste wax on here, relieve some of the friction, and then let's take it for a test drive and see what it is we get. Let's start with something easy like some pine. Let's see what we get on here. Nice curl. A little bit heavy. Let's lighten that up a little bit. A little lighter. Maybe not that light. That's what I'm looking for. Papery smooth type of thing you can basically read through. Clean surface. So if you'd like to try this for yourself, um, I do have plans available on my website that give all the dimensions and measurements so that you can duplicate and do this yourself. Uh, it's really not as difficult as it seems. Yes, it is a little harder of a task, but if you take it step by step, anyone can do this. So I hope this is something that you like. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about this or ask me questions, let me know down below and I answer as many comments as I can possibly get to. Also, I want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. Uh, you guys are what help make this happen. So thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more about that, you can click the link right down there. Also, if you want to help out, you can share this video or subscribe or like or all those things that YouTube loves. Also, I do have a second channel with some behind the scenes footage. You can see that as well. That's about it for today. Until next time, have a wonderful day.